when we write android projects it's not a good practice to write everything into a single file for example ui related work business logic related work api related work we need some mechanism or some structured of code where every layer should serve a separate purpose for example for ui related work we should have a ui related layer for business logic we should have a business related layer now why do we need that we need it so that the maintenance becomes easier scaling becomes easier unit test cases becomes easier now how it can be done there are so many ways available to do that for example mvp mvi mvc mvvm so hi everyone this is prith grover today we will concentrate more on mvvm architecture why do we need that how can we implement that real life example and most widely asked interview questions related to mvvm so our first question is what is mvvm MVVM means model view view model. It is to structure code or write code in such a way that UI work is kept away from the business logic. That means UI will have no idea from where the data is coming. And same goes for the business logic. That means business logic is kept in a separate layer that it has no idea where this business logic is being used. right so this is mvvm now a second very important concept is why mvvm there are couple of reasons why mvvm is widely used and adopted first of all it keeps code clean and understandable by keeping ui code separate business code separate and so on most importantly with the mvvm we don't have to worry about managing the life cycle events such as screen rotation and that is with the help of the view model i'll come to that later but now let's see the flow of mvvm here if you can see first is your ui which is communicating to your view model and then view model which is communicating to another layer that is repository and repository in turn have another two layers one is for the network could be retrofit or volley and one is for your database could be room or sql act anything first is your ui layer where you design your views here comes activity and fragment and next is view model which is used to store and manage ui related data in a life cycle conscious way the best part of view model is it survives configuration change such as screen rotations and this is the beauty of the view model view model act as a mediator in between your view and the data that means view model is responsible for providing the data to your view so that you can display that data on your text views buttons and so on now how the communication will happen between your ui and view model ui will communicate to your view model directly but view model will have no idea of your activity or fragment where it is being used that means there is no direct instance available of your activity or fragment in view model this is the beauty of mvvm now view model will communicate back to your activity or fragment via live data now what is live data live data is an observable data holder class now what is observable data holder class that means unlike a regular observable live data is life cycle aware that means it respects the life cycle of other app components now what is app component that is your activity fragment or services that means live data only update app component observers that are in active life cycle state now what is active life cycle state active means on resume or on start not in on stop or on destroy this is the beauty of live data now let's move to the next part that is a repository what is repository what is network layer what is database this is just a separate layer to hold your data which is either coming from network or coming from database but the catch here is repository will communicate to your view model via observer observable only not directly again which i told you this is the beauty of mvvm no direct instances this makes writing unit test cases very easy now let's move to the code and see how it can be implemented in a practical way here i have created a sample project 
which is MVVM for YouTube. Now the only thing I have added here is the dependencies. These three dependencies for live data, view model, or runtime Kotlin. And one more thing which I have already added is data binding. Data binding is just to bind your data to your views. That's it. Now let's go to the design screen. Here to enable the data binding, we'll have to use layout tag. And you are ready for the data binding. Although there are so many concepts in the data binding that I have already recorded, you can watch that video I have already added in the description. Again, if you want to check the GitHub repo for this MVVM example, I have already created that. I will put that repo link in the description. You can go through with that. Now let's go back to the screen. Let's firstly create UI quickly. We need to edit text here. Let's quickly do that. Okay, we have UI ready. This is a very rough UI. You can design as per your need. Now let's go to your main activity.kotlin file. This is what we call it as a view. So let's put this file inside a view package. Let's create one more package for view model and add our view model inside that package. Now we have created our new view model class that is login view model, and for that we have to extend with the view model constructor. Now to send status either successful or failure to UI, we have created live data of type string here. Now I have created two live data here. One is mutable and one is immutable. Mutable is private to our view model and immutable is the one which will be exposed to our UI. This is because we don't want any other class to change the live data of view model. So that is why I have kept mutable live data as a private and immutable live data as a public one. And this one will get mutable live data. So now we have live data which will respond back to the activity. Now how it will do that? Let's go to the main activity and see. Okay. So now quickly let's create the instances here. Here I have created two instances, one for view model and one for data binding. Now as I have already told that we are using data binding here to access the views. So this is how we can access the views. Activity main binding dot let's say pattern login which I had already created right to use a click listener. This is how we can do that. Pretty simple. We won't have to use find view by add and so on. Now let's assign the value to the view model. This is how we can create instance of the view model. Although we can create view model instance via the help of delegates, 
but for the ease i have used this way to create instance of the view model now mvvm says that every layer should serve a separate purpose now we have view model which will contain only view model or business logic view which will contain only activity or fragment related data now third thing we will have to do is to create a model which will hold the data coming from anywhere from database from your network or just to display the data to the user let's quickly create a package for model and create a data class to hold the user data it will hold email and password perfect we have data class now let's go to the view model and write one business logic to verify the input should be private is input valid which will take email and password perfect we have a function now this is where we have to write the business logic let's use text utils class here if email id is empty or not oh oh yes let's use password dot length to see if password length is greater than 5 or not so this is how we will use our business logic now we have the business logic right here. now let's say once user click on the login on your ui we will call function here in the view model that means we won't write our business logic in the ui class so this is why we have mvvm architecture we will see if login is valid or not by calling this function and we'll see we will get boolean as a value we will see if login is valid then we will return success if not we will return failure then how will we return that we will use live data here that is mutable live data dot set value is equal to success otherwise we will set value as a failure perfect we have our view model ready to use of course how can we do that now there are two things in the activity one is once you just click on the button we will call our view model on login click function or business logic to validate if our input is valid or not let's do that quickly login view model dot on login click we will have to send email and password now how can we do that activity mail binding dot et email dot text dot to string power similar way we will use et password dot text dot to string perfect we have called this function now now we just need to get the data from the view model if success or failure for that we will have to use the live data that means we will have to observe the live data and for that what we can do is login view model dot live data that means login live data that is immutable live data dot observe now we can either use toast or wherever we want to use the value we can do that here perfect now we have our code ready in the mvvm architecture now let's run the application and see how it works perfect we have your email id password and login let's uh, write anything hello puneet at the rate hs.com and password 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 
click on login it is displaying as a success let's use any four digit password and see it should display as a failure click on login awesome we have the filler so this is how we can implement the mmm architecture so thank you so much everyone for watching this video i hope that you have got good insight on mmm architecture and how can we implement that easily but still if you have any questions please feel free to write down in the comment section with that i would say please share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also learn that keep learning see you in the next video bye bye